going to be zero, just like the sodium and the chlorine in this example. If I'm working with an alkali metal, like I formed an alkali metal, or if I'm given an alkali metal that's in a salt or in an aqueous solution, it's going to be a plus one because, you know, all group one metals have lose that one valence electron. Alkaline earths, all group two metals, lose their two valence, their S electrons. Fluorine is always going to be negative one. That's a given. I can't promise you the other halogens are going to do that because you already know there's a chlorate and a chloride anion where chlorine has a different oxidation state. Bromine does the same thing as bromate and iodine does several different things. But fluorine is always going to be a negative one. Hydrogen is plus one. I guess I should have said, I shouldn't have said fluorine. I should have said fluoride. No, I should have said fluorine is always going to be fluoride is the way you would say that, I guess. <clears throat> Hydrogen is going to be plus one as long as it's hanging out with nonmetals. And here's where all the exceptions start. Up until I got to step five, or rule number five, there were no exceptions. And in chemistry, there are always exceptions. And rule five are where those start. Hydrogen, when it's with a non-metal, is going to have a plus one charge unless it's going to hang out with metals. And then it's what we call a hydride. For example... NaH is called sodium hydride. Now you notice I've got sodium and I've already talked about sodium in step number two. Step number two comes before uh, or rule number two comes before rule number five so you always follow these rules in the order that they're given. So sodium wins. Sodium gets to be the plus one you expect it to be. That means hydrogen is not going to get to be positive one as well because it has to total to be neutral as a compound. That means that the hydrogen is going to be negative one. So when it's hanging out with a metal, these are super rare. You're not going to encounter them frequently. And oxygen is always going to be negative two. Unless, and yeah, there's another rare exception. Those are called peroxides. And that is where the oxygen decides it's going to be a minus one instead. And that's where you get the notorious H2O2, the brown stuff in the bottle. It's one oxidation state. It's much more stable as a minus two, and it's trying to change back. And you can keep going and get some more.